So she's the part-time mayor of a South Suburban village of a little more than 20,000 people. Yet residents of Dalton are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars per year to provide security for their self-proclaimed super mayor. Ever since a bombshell court filing revealed the fact that Ms. Fannie Willis had actually hired Mr. Nathan Wade, with whom she was having allegedly an affair with, to be the lead prosecutor against both President Trump and the other co-defendants. Alvin Brock says Fulton County Commissioner Natalie Hall fired him after he ended a sexual relationship with her. A federal judge ruled in Brock's favor earlier this month. All right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, YouTube? It is your boy once again with another episode of Foolery. My people, my people, my people, what is going on? What is going on with all our um, strong black women? These powerful women that's, that's in charge of city, got mayors and commissioners and all this other stuff. Uh, what, what's going on? Because a lot of them are starting to fall. I mean, they crashing. Bad. Crash. What is, what's, what's going on? This was your shot. Y'all had that time being put in positions, running for office, all this stuff, and now y'all crashing and burning. So we had, this right here, this is what we got. We got a Miss Natalie Hall, Tiffany Hingard, and Fannie Willis. Three women that's running thing. Two in Fulton, Fulton County, was that Georgia? And the other girl is in Dalton, I think it's in Illinois. They are embarrassing. Let's just do that. They're embarrassing. They're um, taking advantage of other black people. Um, it's just sad. What we do to ourselves once we get in, in We just go and just treat everybody else like crap. But see, everything comes in circles. So it comes back around now. Like I always tell people, I say, man, the man upstairs will give you everything you want. And gonna see how you handle it. And if you don't handle it right, he's gonna come back and take it from you. And as you see, all these women are starting to fall. So let's jump right in this, guys, and let's get it popping. And we're gonna start out with Miss Fanny Willis, the famous Fanny Willis, trying to lock up the ex president. You know they was coming for you. You knew it. And you still did what you did. So let's get it popping, guys. Y'all know what to do before we do it. Hit that subscribe, like, share, but definitely hit that notification bell and hit the all on your notifications to get the what? The next video. So no further ado, let's get it. Okay, so everybody know Fannie Willis. Fannie Willis is the famous DA down in Fulton County, uh, Georgia, that's processing Donald Trump. All right, so she has gotten a lot of tension and... I mean, just getting well known out there. And with that being said, she decided to do some things. Now, why she did this, I have no idea. But she decided to hire this dude that's not really qualified on the RICO cases to be over this case above the guy who actually have all the experience in the RICO case and paying him double of what all the other attorneys are getting. Does it make sense? Now, you didn't think this was going to draw some red flags somewhere? You see what I'm saying? People, I say they're not, they not thinking. And then on top of all of this, you're going to decide to have a sexual relationship with this man. Now, let's not forget, this good buddy here is married. She's going through a divorce, but now she's in the entanglement with the divorce. So now Trump team is on her neck, putting everything out. They don't got her emails. They got all kind of stuff. My women, what the H are y'all doing? But let's get into it, man. They got it all in the news and everything. So y'all can see it yourself. Lawful compensation while allegedly profiting from her relationship with Mr. Wade. 
And of course, that last part there about Mr. Wade, that refers to the ongoing scandal that's been brewing in this case for the past three or four weeks now, ever since a bombshell court filing revealed the fact that Ms. Fannie Willis had actually hired Mr. Nathan Wade, with whom she was having allegedly an affair with, to be the lead prosecutor against both President Trump and the other co-defendants. She then paid Mr. Nathan Wade significant amounts of taxpayer money, about $700,000 in total, after which he turned around and, again, allegedly took her on many beautiful vacations to places around the world, Napa Valley, Florida, the Caribbean, and so on. Now, other than the entanglement, like I said, uh, <laughs> when you treat people wrong, they're going to get you back. So other than this entanglement that got her, got the first attention on her, she and her team, a supervisor, she says, uh, been having their time misappropriating funds. And now that has come out because one of the people that you fired is disgruntled now and say, what the H? Let's put this out there. She managed to record Miss Fannie Willis as she was telling her about one of their co-workers or subordinates for her taking the grant money and using it to buy personal stuff up, I mean, fix up his office and like he said, buy some swag. $480,000 and he was willing, he was ready to go and spend it up on whatever. And when she tried to stop him and report it, uh, the lady was let go. And see, and now these funds were allocated for like juveniles and um, underprivileged kids, you know, troubled kids and that type of thing, programs for these kids and all that. And they ready to take part of that money and go, like I say, buy some swag. That's something, and our people something. Stupid is what they are. Still. So Fannie Willis fired the lady when she tried to report what was going on. Ain't that something? Check it out. So she had an employee that tried to warn her about what was happening, okay? And the employee ended up getting fired by her, and now an employee is coming out and discussing uh, this issue and she leaked this audio recording of a meeting that she had with Miss Fanny. Uh, and you know, I want to go ahead and play this clip so you guys can hear the corruption here. If you had to give me a sentence, what is the sentence theme? Once I told him about his respectfully and in an email about his lack of leadership and the fact that he wanted to do things with grants that were impossible. And yeah, so she's warning Fannie Willis about her aid. OK, spending um, federal funds inappropriately. And I kept telling him, like, we can't do that and questioning stuff. He would take me off projects, tell people I wasn't doing what I was supposed to because I questioned him because I understood. I helped write that grant. I knew what was in that grant. He told everybody in front of Crystal, Deontay, everybody, we're going to get macbooks we're gonna do that we're gonna get swag we're gonna use it for travel i said you cannot do that it's a very very specific grant took me off i questioned junior da there's kids in there from out of the the um the county all this took me off junior da i didn't not want to do it he made it look as if i wasn't doing what i needed to do because i questioned him because so, i knew for a fact mr cuffy respectfully did not know what he was doing so period so I respect that is your assessment. Um, it was clear to me that you and Mr. Cuffey were not getting along. And I'm not saying that your assessment is wrong. I want you to really listen to the words I'm saying. Cuffey, and this is my personal opinion to one woman to another, is dangerous to your administration. He tells people, when I reached out to you, he told me, oh, um, you think your word is safe? Um, and exactly when you reached out to Miss uh, Willis, she called me and told me, she tell me everything. So once you reach out to her, she's going to reach up back out to me. So I didn't even go to HR. Okay, he put Dexter's something? name on my PDP and I didn't even feel safe going to anybody. Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. I have three supervisors that have failed in this building. What's interesting to me, because I'm in a learning curve too, they each pretend to have a relationship with me that they do not have. I guess that's an intimidation tactic. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you felt that way, but you, Dexter certainly don't have no relationship with uh, right. Michael Cuffey. You were safe to go those places. Yeah. So you see, now you heard that. Okay. That's the audio of this woman uh, complaining to Miss Fannie Willis about corruption in her organization, in her office. And uh, eventually Miss 
Fannie Willis fired her, right? They fired this woman, uh, even though she felt like she was being intimidated and retaliated against for exposing the corruption, okay? So now, what do y'all think about that? Um, in the comments, what do y'all think? Do you think the lady should have been fired for going to her to tell her about the aid? Or the woman should have just shut her mouth and they should have just split the money up? F the kids. F all the kids in the neighborhood. Let's just spend this money up on some swag, some mat books. Let's take some trips. You know how y'all ladies like to take trips? Yeah, see, and this is where you ladies going to come on here and like, Oh, y'all always bashing the black woman and y'all blah, blah, blah. No, negative, negative. Love my women. Married to them, all this other good stuff y'all want to say. What I'm pointing out is the crap that y'all do. And this is the crap y'all do at a higher level. You shit on your own. And then y'all walk around with your heads all high like you the stuff. This is ridiculous what's going on with all these ladies. Oh, there's more though. Let's go. Oh, her corruption. It is a bombshell audio recording that was leaked from uh, 2021 showing that Miss Fanny Willis uh, fired a employee, okay, who blew the whistle on the misuse of federal funds. Now, this employee, whose name is Amanda Timpson, uh, tried to warn Miss Fanny Willis that campaign funds were being misused by her aide, Michael Kufe. Uh, because he wanted to allegedly use $488,000 of a federal grant earmarked for the creation of a center of youth empowerment and gang prevention to pay for swag, computers, and travel. Okay, so essentially, you have funds, half a million dollars, that's supposed to be used to create a center for youth empowerment and gang prevention. This guy wanted to use the funds for other things, right? He wanted to buy computers and to travel and, you know, use the funds for things that you aren't supposed to use the funds for, okay? And people just get all this money and then they just spend it on nonsense, right? The money never goes to what it's supposed to actually go to, okay? As this center for uh, prevention of youth violence and, you know, gang activity and stuff like that, it was never created, right? It was never created. And this is not the only allegation of misuse of funds against uh, the DA's office as in 2020. Um, they received a $2 million grant from the Sexual Assault Kit Initiative to help Atlanta Police Department's rape kit backlog. Um, Willis's office has since pulled nearly $13,000 from the grant to purchase computers and spent an additional $27,000 on airfare, hotels, and car rentals, according to Fulton County records. So again, you have a history here of misuse of funds. So it's no wonder that you have the citizens of Fulton County demanding some accountability uh, in auditing of the DA's office who has no issue spending taxpayer dollars in whatever way she wants to benefit herself. So she had an employee that tried to warn her about what was happening, okay? And the employee ended up getting fired by her and now the employee is coming out and discussing uh, shout out to the black conservative perspective for that piece. He, that, he did well on that, on that um, information. So what do y'all think after all that? You think she going down? I think she's going to crash and burn. I think she's going to crash and burn. Well, let's move on to the next one. Miss Natalie Hall. Yes, Miss Natalie Hall. Another one. Let's get it. They can't leave these men alone. Can't leave them alone. No, my man, my man, my man. Yep. Yeah. I'm sticking by him. That's my man. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's see what she did. Now to a Fox 5 exclusive. The former chief of staff for a Fulton County commissioner is speaking out for the first time about his almost $1 million settlement against Fulton County. Calvin Brock says Fulton County Commissioner Natalie Hall fired him after he ended a sexual relationship with her. A federal judge ruled in Brock's favor earlier this month. Fox 5's Angelique Proctor talked with the fired employee about the toll the case had on him. Calvin Brock says finally having this sexual discrimination case behind him feels really good. Wait, 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 wait. A woman 
charged with sexual discrimination against a man? A black man? Whoa. Whoa. He says finding the courage to actually file it in the first place was one of the most difficult things he's ever done. I have a regret from the first time that I was propositioned. Fired Chief of Staff Calvin Brock says he agreed to a sexual relationship with Fulton County Commissioner Natalie Hall that he knew was wrong because he wanted to keep his six-figure salary. The lows got very low. I had to take out of my 401k to finish um, rebuilding my house. Um, and then just the emotional standpoint, I did go to a psychiatrist, could not find a job. I honestly felt like I was blackballed in the, in the city. Once Brock ended the romance, Hall fired him. That's when the 52-year-old filed an equal employment opportunity complaint that led to a jaw-dropping trial that reveals sexual encounters in Hall's office and their homes. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> Wait a damn <laughs> Dude reversed all this stuff. He used all the stuff the women used to say and flipped it over on her. You like how sad he was? You know, it's like, oh, I had to do this, I had to see a psychiatrist, I, my money on my 401k, all because I wouldn't give her the D. That's all it was about. If I had gave her the D, I'd have kept my six-figure job, but it stank. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just funny. I'm just having fun. Brock and his attorney said having the traditional roles reversed was going to be tough, but they believe they would prevail because of the overwhelming evidence, including tracking devices Hall placed in Brock's car. The evidence was damning, it was salacious, and it was non-flattering. We felt that the county certainly did not want this to go forward and, and let the public see what was going on. Attorney Mitchell says he tried to settle with the county several times before the trial. In the end, a federal judge awarded Brock back pay with interest, compensatory damages, and attorney's fees. He says he finally feels whole. There was so much manipulation and, and abuse of power amongst other employees that were in that office that I tried to protect over the years that I felt like if I did not do this, I felt like others would be actually targeted. Mr. Brock says he no longer wants to work in county government and has completely changed career paths to cyber security. In Gwinnett County, Anjali Proctor, Fox 5 News. Commissioner was accused of using her power and her position to mistreat her staff and not just him, but other employees. You all saw it yourself, the way she responded to a well-known news reporter after the judge found her guilty. In fact, she let her actions do the speaking by swatting my hand away during her county commission meeting here with a lot of other people around, including police. Comment at all about the Jordan orders. Oh, you pushed me, that's assault. Commissioner Natalie Hall smacked my hand hard as I tried to ask her about the judge's ruling. Then because he didn't want to date her exclusively, she fired him. And on top of all of that, it was so much evidence that the judge ordered the county to pay him nearly $1 million. I'm still trying to figure out how these city girl officials, they're supposed to have all these options, yet they're so desperate for a man that they're sleeping around with their employees their colleagues, married men, violating code 1000%. And of course, you have a lot of people defending this type of debauchery, men and women, because they're scandalous themselves. And they also have no self-discipline, so they can relate to all this mess. But fortunately, they are not the ones deciding these cases. All right, shout out to Pink Book Lessons for that piece there. You know, she always do a great job. I like listening to her content. Uh, is this woman here, Nally Hall, a commissioner, um, also down in Fulton County, Georgia. You ladies at, at the top of your careers, and you are forcing somebody to give you the D. You're going to fire the man because he wouldn't give you no D. 
really thought that was going to work. So just imagine how many people she's done this to. Just imagine how many employees, because all these are subordinates under her. So just imagine. And like we always say, y'all say y'all want somebody up here, but people up here don't want you. So y'all down here messing with these dudes. All the people in the world, you want to chase after this one using tracking devices and all. You just crazy, lady. You just crazy. So let's move on to the next one. This one is sure enough crazy. Miss Tiffany Hinger. Bro, I don't even know what to say about this one. But let's get it anyway. Hey guys, this is Super Mayor Tiffany A. Henyard, the People's Mayor and People's Supervisor. Tiffany Henyard makes nearly a quarter million dollars a year serving as both Mayor of Dalton and Thornton Township Supervisor, an elected political double dip. She's charismatic and controversial. Nobody knows something. Don't nobody know nothing. Here she is starting a Dalton Village board meeting dressed like the Wesley Snipes character in the movie New Jack City. Come on, man. Come on, man. Got me doing boosie up in here. How crazy is this sounding? This is a mayor, a elected mayor, showing up at one of her meetings as Nino from New Jack City. Not Wesley Snipes, Nino. Y'all know who Nino was in New Jack City. She rolls up like that with a DJ. If this ain't the countryest, you know what I ever seen in my life. But... It's our sisters. I wouldn't bash you. Wouldn't talk about you like that. Not me. Later, punctuating her political points with the help of her own DJ. Every single resident. Pay me what you owe me. Thank you, DJ. See, behavior like this is why they don't want us in these officiating jobs like this. We show up and turn into a damn. That's what it, just like, I mean, look, look what she did. Show up at a meeting dressed up as a drug lord from a TV show with a DJ talking about pay me my money. If that wasn't the most ghetto egg thing I ever seen in my life. But you sisters ain't going to say nothing because it's a black woman. Don't you dare say nothing about a black woman. You let her go out there and embarrass the crap out of all of us and you better not say nothing. That's where we at, right? And it's hard to turn anywhere in Dalton without seeing Henyard's picture or online, where she recently commemorated 9-11 with her own photo. I want to ask you a few questions. Okay. But when we asked Henyard a few months ago about her use of tax dollars, she was quickly hustled out of the room by armed security. And on Facebook, in videos posted by Henyard herself, we see her being driven around and surrounded by Dalton officers, which got us to wondering, why all the cops? We weren't opposed to her having the security detail. We asked how long and how often. Dalton trustee Brittany Norwood says Henyard began assembling her details shortly after being elected in 2021 using hand-picked Dalton police officers. Using a Freedom of Information request, we obtained the work records for six of the officers assigned to Henyard's security detail at various times. <laughs> it's barely 20,000 people in the whole town. Uh, it's like most of them are older people, low crime rate. Why do you need a armed security walking around with you? Why? and showed them to some of Dalton's trustees. This is a freedom of information request we did to see how much overtime these officers are making on her security details. Oh, wow. 162 hours. 162. Well, that's nothing. What goes through your mind when you see these numbers? Um, uh, it, it's, it's disappointing. It's frustrating. The officers are paid every two weeks, which without overtime is 80 hours. But when they're put on Henyard's detail, that 80 hours balloons to well over 100 100 hours, sometimes 200 hours. And in the case of Officer Terry Young last May, 303 hours worked over a two week period. That resulted in a single paycheck of more than $13,000. How? How does a person put in a two week pay period, 303 hours? That's impossible. That's there's, impossible. There's 336 hours. Does he hours never go to sleep? In fact, there are 336 hours total in two weeks, meaning Young was not being paid for only 33 hours over that period. Other officers on the security detail are also racking up overtime paychecks in the multiple thousands of dollars. Mayor, Let's mind see. if I ask you a couple questions about your security detail? Absolutely not. I'm asking her. Yeah, she says no. 
A couple weeks ago, we tried to question Henyard about her detail as she went door to door in Dalton giving out water on a 100 degree day. Surrounded by police, firefighters, public works employees, and two videographers documenting for Dalton's Facebook page. I want to tell the people I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. I hope they post what we actually do here in the village of Dalton. It's not telling lies. But when we gave her an opportunity to explain the OT... Mayor, why do you need so many officers, you ask, details, you or your security? Water? What did you say, water? It sounded like you said water. Earlier that day, we watched as a Dalton cop drove Enyard from her other job at Thornton Township to a Mexican restaurant for lunch. Trustees say the security detail picks the mayor up at her home in the morning and is with her until she's dropped off at night, often taking her on errands and shopping. Does she need a security detail? Absolutely not. Why? Why would you need a security detail? Oh, she loves it. She just loves it. She loves the detail. <laughs> I think um, it makes her feel as if um, she's like a superstar. Dalton trustees have filed a lawsuit against Tenyard, saying she's not justified the need for security and is spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on it without the board's approval. Now, other than spending up all the money on that, she also has a bad habit of hiring people that's not qualified. Now, she hired this lady, this female friend of hers, who was on Section 8, no experience, gave her uh, like almost six-figure job, just being her yes girl whatsoever. And then she hired this dude here. And I'm let y'all see this. And this dude, well, I'll let y'all see it. And then I'll jump in on it. And just and hit me in the comments when y'all see who she hired and let me know what you guys hire him. To investigation that found a new village employee with a dangerous criminal past. He is a registered child sex offender and he's now been hired by the village to go into people's homes and businesses. Now furious village trustees are taking steps to curb the mayor's power. Fox 32's Dane Placco broke the story and he has the latest from Dalton. What is the situation involving your background? Well, my background, the childhood background, over 30 no, years no ago. Comment. 46-year-old Lavelle Redmond wasn't happy to see us when we encountered him today behind Dalton Village Hall. But listen again to the person on the phone telling him to stop talking. We don't know who that is, but we do know who got Redmond his village job. Redmond is close to new Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard and worked on her campaign. Records obtained by Fox 32 show that on September 20th, Redmond was hired as a code enforcement officer for the village of Dalton, a job that gives him access inside homes and businesses, which is why Dalton residents were shocked when we showed them what we found online. Oh my God, don't they supposed to do background checks before they allow these people in, the, in these kind of positions? One would think, right? Yes. That's because Redmond is listed as a child sex offender on the Illinois State Police Registry. He served 24 years of a 50-year sentence for taking part in the brutal gang rape and beating of two young girls in the Roseland neighborhood in 1991. News reports at the time say Redmond was one of four young men who kidnapped the girls and took them to an abandoned garage where they were sexually assaulted and beaten with boards and guns. I would be terrified to know now if he had come to my house to do a code inspection. Mm -hmm. I'll be terrified. Yeah. That's crazy. I don't know. <laughs> he won't get in my house, though. Dalton trustees say Redmond was hired directly by Mayor Henyard and her village administrator, former Cook County Circuit Court clerk Dorothy Brown. Did the trustees have any input in this hire? No, the trustees have not had any input on any hire since um, the swearing in of this administration. Wow. You give an offender access, you give him a six-figure job and access to enter to into mostly young women homes because remember she said that's code violation, the only way they're going to inspect in these codes, that's in those um, like Section 8 homes or whatever y'all call them now, but they go and inspect the home, make sure you ain't tearing up the homes. So y'all give him access to go into these homes, mostly women and children in it, and he is uh, as offender, a violent one, violent dude at that. And uh, you give him a job. Would y'all give him a job? Would y'all hire me for your business? Let him come in or would y'all uh, invite him in your home to 
do some work at your house with your woman and your kids? Just knowing this background? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Now, this next move she made, this is where she is um, really hurting the people of the town. Really hurting them. Really hurting them. Now, this part going into a more of the financials where this, this woman leased a SUV for over $149,000 with the worst interest rate I've ever seen in my life, fifty-five over $55,000 in interest charge. This is ridiculous. But let them tell you, man. Let them tell you. She swears she didn't do it. Swear she didn't do it. That brings us to Tiffany Henyard, the city girl mayor. You see, she's done all of which I'm talking about. The city's budget about two years ago was doing pretty good. Everything was okay. Overtime for police officers were fine. But nope, when Tiffany Henyard went into office, a lot of stuff started happening. Like, you know, her buying this particular Chevrolet Tahoe. At the end of the day, nobody comes here to argue with you. Nobody at all. There are bills that we have the right to take off. We have the right to make decisions about. You say that you're running it at the end of the day, because this is going to be the narrative. When we go broke, you're going to say, I wasn't even on the bank account. The trustees did it. When at the end of the day, you're making decisions and spending money and then get mad when we don't approve it because it's not financially staffed. I sat here and looked at a lease that child's paying $149,000 for one of them trucks. You make absolute, that's like when you're 19 years old and you go get a car and the interest rate 27%. That makes absolutely no sense. You're Please not making facts. great finance, excuse me? Please stay facts. But let me tell you, here it is, dated December 27, 2022, the cash price of a 2023 Chevy Tahoe, $93,216.71, interest in APR, $55,929.49, total lease price, $149,146.20. Tell me if it's not facts, because your signature is all on it. Signature is all on it. All on it. All on it. All on it. Or what about the refusal to turn in the receipts of money that she's spending? Trustee Jason House highlighted that the board hasn't received the credit card statements in six months. As we've been repeatedly asking for information that's been do documented time and again about credit card statements. We haven't received credit card statements in six months. We haven't gotten the electronic warrant list, but yet we're supposed to vote on it. This is not new to this administration. On September 6, 2022, the village accounting firm flagged an issue via email regarding missing supporting invoices. A sum of $64,899.66 in credit card transactions lacked accompanying receipts or any form of supporting documentation within the system. Subsequently, another notification was received in November concerning transactions amounting to $54,456.07 without corresponding receipts. The cumulative total of these transactions without proper documentation amounts to $119,355.73. But uh-oh, I think we're getting somewhere because the trustees of Dalton have released a new video which shall explain exactly what Tiffany Henyard has been doing. Now, again, she's going to come out and blame the city and the trustee board for not paying vendors the money that is owed to them, right? She's saying, hey, you guys need to pay these people. Let's check it out. In the village of Dalton, a contentious issue has arisen regarding unpaid vendors and fiscal responsibility. Let's dive into the details of this ongoing conflict. The mayor says if the vendor does the work, they should get paid. If they did the work, pay them. What is the issue? Pay them. And all I'm asking is that you got paid what's owed to them. They did the work, let's pay them. That's the end of my statement. But the sad reality is after the board does vote for important items to get paid, it doesn't happen. One of Well, one of the reasons that the vendors aren't getting paid is that they, the city doesn't have any money. She has run the deficit up to $7 million and still going. $7 million in the red and still going. She is 
took taking money and used it for her. Um, she has some kind of breast cancer foundation or something like that. She took ten thousand out and donated it to the foundation without proper authority. You know, just doing stuff like, like even for the the, the SUV. You're not supposed to put one signature on any purchase. It's supposed to be two signatures. She's signing off stuff, and no one else is signing off on it. So she's just buying billboards, bicycles, going to eat, flying first class to Vegas, taking a whole crew with her. It's ridiculous. Now the city is broke. So this is where we at now. The city is broke. And she is taxing the 20,000 people in the town uh, with a medium income of like $28,000 a year. One of the key components of this dispute is the Community Block Grant, an annual grant allocated to the village for street resurfacing. The board voted to resurface five streets in Dalton and to pay the vendor responsible for the work. Unfortunately, despite the board's decision, the vendor remains unpaid. On December 14th, Deconstruction sent an email to trustee Jason House highlighting the unpaid balance of $378,620.64. The situation extends beyond street resurfacing. The company LED Lighting Solutions, responsible for installing special stop signs that light up, is also awaiting payment with a balance of $17,999.80. Vendors frustrated by the lack of response from the mayor and her administration, these vendors turn to the trustees for help. It's worth noting that these vendors were approved by the board, further adding to the complexity of the situation. The heart of the matter lies in the village's financial situation. The administration does not have the funds to pay these vendors because of the current $7 million deficit and the million dollar police detail. Overtime police before this administration that did not have security details following them around everywhere, overtime was at $600,000 maximum, maximum every year. This administration is at 1.6 million. How are we gonna get service? We need the mayor to mm -hmm. stop spending money irresponsibly. Four years ago, we were not in this mess. Four years ago. Yes, we were. So, correction. We were not in this mess. We were paying bills. We did not have vendors emailing us on a weekly basis for non-payment. To keep the false story that the board is not doing their job and the village is not going broke, she is taxing the residents with high fines and water shutoffs in the winter. They are all here after getting slapped with various citations all of a sudden by the city. And Did I tell you that the city is probably about 90% black? And she is doing this to the city. They don't have any money and she's finding them like parking tickets. She raised the parking tickets from $50 to $500. She's turning their water off. She's doing all kind of stuff and taxing them to try to pay this money back now. That's how weird this girl is and how she's abusing the people up the city or the town rather. But this is how she's doing this. That's why I say we do it to ourselves. We get in power, everybody cheering like, oh yeah, we finally got somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then y'all put that foot on our necks until y'all just grind us out, just out of existence. Our own people. She's dragging her own people. Who? No accountability. None. And y'all sister gonna say something. Y'all shouldn't be on her block. Because I already had, well, I did a video a while back on her, and that was some of the people were saying. Y'all need to stay off her. I can't stand black men. Get on in, do their podcast, and talk about black women. But I talk about black women who do stuff wrong. If you out here doing stuff wrong, then you might see me talk about you. How about that? I suggest you don't do nothing wrong, then. Let's do that. Every single resident. Pay me what you owe me. In conclusion, the board stands united in their effort to prevent the administration from pushing Dalton further into debt. But what she's not going to tell you is that there's $7 million over budget because of her. One comment on the financials, and I don't know how I'm uh, neglected to do this. All the way until last month, 
we were receiving monthly financial reports. This month, we did not receive a monthly financial report the way that we traditionally would. When we talk about the deficit, last fiscal year through May, the deficit was $2.5 in our operating account. This year, through the report we got, which was September 30th, I pulled that up as you were speaking, so from May through September, there was an additional $4.2 million of deficit. So you couple those two together, the deficit is growing and it's approaching $7 million. And I will share that financial report. We have not received anything this month. And my uh, concern, and, and, and sometimes you kind of joke your way through some of the pain because it, it really is painful. Uh, but we speak how in different meetings, um, Trustee Belcher will bring a lease or an invoice and then the retaliation on the next month is we don't get access to the yep. accounting system. <clears throat> okay, shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson on that last piece. Um, he dug that one up. This is crazy, man. And this is only three. I was going to do four, but it was running long, so I didn't do that last lady. But these are the things I can't, I had to write them down. It's what, between these three ladies, what's been going on. Inappropriate relationships, intimidation tactics, harassment, sexual harassment, inappropriate spending taxpayers' funds, stalking, tracking personnel, sexual discrimination, and I forgot to put the other one, hiring unqualified individuals, and uh, what else we got out there? What else we got? What we got? What we got? It doesn't matter. It's a lot. And it's just three women in power. You are going to crash and burn. That last one, Tiffany Henry, they coming for you. A order, big order is coming. You best believe. There's a couple more. I'm going to dig them up and find them because it's one she already got the FBI on her. Going down. Well, guys, y'all let me know how y'all like the video. I'm trying to do a little more on this, a little more investigative type stuff. So uh, let me know what y'all think. Y'all like these type of videos. So I'll continue on every once in a while because they take a while to do. So I'll throw one in here and there, and we'll rock with that. But other than that, y'all know what to do. Y'all subscribe, like, hit that notification bell, and make sure you comment and like the video. That's how the algorithms keep moving. So let's keep doing that. And with all that and all that, it is your boy, Mr. Nobody And I am up out of here. Peace.